Do you use the machine controller but want to use it inside of Ableton Live instead of the machine software? In a previous video, I showed you the most common way that I use machine inside of Ableton. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert the machine plugin into a drum rack. So let's get into it. YouTube, this is Ben from bemusic.net. And this video is actually a continuation from a previous video in which I showed you kind of the most common way that I use machine inside of Ableton. But in this video, I'm gonna show you kind of a slightly different way uh, to go about using the machine plugin uh, so that you can utilize the push controller with machine. So let's get into it. So we're here inside of Ableton and I have one MIDI track. And since I have a push controller, I'm gonna hit the add device. I'm gonna scroll down to my plugins folder then the audio units, then native instruments, uh, and then scroll to machine two and hit the load button. And so it's gonna take a second or two for the plugin to load. Now that the plugin is loaded, I'm going to convert it into an Ableton drum rack. But before I do that, I wanna say that it doesn't really matter in what order you do these next steps because once you actually have the plugin converted into a drum rack, uh, you can save it as a template in your user library and then there's no need to have to do this process every time you want to use machine as a drum rack. So we have the plugin loaded onto this MIDI track and we want to convert it into a drum rack. And you can do this in one of two different ways. Uh, you can either convert it using the push controller or um, you don't have to, if you don't have the push controller, uh, you can do it the old fashioned way. First, I'll show you how to convert the plugin into a drum rack with the push controller. It's actually pretty simple. You just hit this convert button right here. And uh, the push screen asks what you want to convert it to. And uh, you can see that the drum pad prompt uh, below that is uh, highlighted. And you just hit that button and now you successfully converted the machine plugin into a drum rack. Sadly, you're not quite done and there are still a few more steps that, you, that need to happen to make this work. And uh, as you can see, the machine plugin has been put into the first drum pad slot. If you don't have a push controller um, and you still want to convert it into a drum rack, uh, you can still do it the old fashioned way, which is right click on the plugin and uh, then uh, select convert to drum rack. So now that you have the plugin converted as a drum rack, next click on this little uh, icon right here. It's uh, the list icon uh, so that you can reveal the device chain list, which is just a list of all the devices that are in the drum rack. And then click the IO button to reveal the MIDI input output section of the device chain. And under the receive column, uh, the pull down menu says C1. Uh, and hit the little arrow button to open up uh, the pull uh, to open up the pull down menu and then scroll all the way to the top and select all notes. Now go to the machine controller and in this case I have the machine studio. Hit the channel button, make sure you're in the group tab and then navigate to the input section and change the MIDI routing to manual and then the source to host. And now that the routing is all done, we don't hear anything when we hit the pads on the push controller. And that's because we haven't added a kit uh, in the machine yet. So if we go back to the machine studio controller and hit the browse button and we open up our group library and you can select whichever kit you desire. It doesn't really matter for this uh, particular example. Uh, so just select any kit and hit load. And, uh, but remember to hit the browse button again to exit the browse mode. And now uh, when you hit the pads on the push controller, you have the selected kit ready to go. And you hit record and start drum programming. Once you have the drum rack created and you have the kit ready to go, if you don't want to use the push controller, you can switch your machine controller into MIDI mode and use the machine to drum program. But the reality is you'd really only use this method if you were going to be using the push controller to control machine. Otherwise, it's probably just easier to use the regular old plugin method that I showed you in the previous video uh, instead of this method. 
So one of the really, really great things about Ableton is that once you've created this drum rack, you can just drag the MIDI track into the user library and save it for another session. And then you don't have to uh, do this over and over and over again. But before you save the template into your user library, make sure all of the clip slots are empty because Ableton will save any clips along with the template. Something else to note, you can load these presets via the push controller, but, and there's a very big but here, you have to save it in your user library as an ADG file. ADG stands for Ableton Device Group. Otherwise, the controller won't recognize the file. And if that's something that you wanna learn how to do, definitely let me know in the comments below and I can make a video uh, showing you how to do that. Your support means the world to me, so please definitely hit that subscribe button. You can hit that little bell icon uh, to get notified. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting on those as well too. Um, and if you need information regarding uh, licensing of music, you can contact me through the website at bemusic.net. You can also contact me via Twitter and Instagram. I'll respond as well. And if you have any questions or if you have any content suggestions, if there are videos that you would like to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for coming to the channel and thank you so much for sticking around. I really, really hope that you come back and watch more. Thanks again and bye for now.